feeling a little bit like Big Bird to me. On top of it, this headpiece is awful. I think it would have looked better without the headpiece because it's just making her feel like a little bit like a candy cane. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen, and I am the brightest crane in the box. Y'all, if you are new here, or if you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I feel like I say this every week, but a lot of you still have not subscribed. I look at my analytics, and I notice that you did not click that button. So, bitch, what are you waiting for? Click that button. Today, uh, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of it. Drag Race France. Season 3, Episode 3, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, where I let you know who had the fab and drab of the week. This week, we are having a ball. That is right, it is my favorite challenge of the entire competition, and it is the ball. But this time, they are not doing your typical three looks, they are doing two. Aww. I know. So disappointing. The first look is Olympic Flame, where the queens must give us a look inspired by fire. The second look is a look that they are making in the workroom from a whole bunch of junk, and they must create a look for the opening ceremonies. Whatever that means, but let's get into these looks. We're gonna be looking at the queens one by one. First, their Olympic Flame look, and then their opening ceremonies look, before we're moving on to the next queen, so you'll see them side by side. So, without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded into obscurity. First up, it's Misty Phoenix, and Misty Phoenix is coming out in this, like, beige dress with these uh, big hips and this, like, gold dress underneath. She's got this blonde hair and this corseted with just a little tip. When I first saw it, I wasn't really sure what was going on. I obviously saw the flames around her hips, but I didn't really quite understand the concept. She goes on to explain that she is the flame goddess coming out of the Olympic torch. And I was like, oh, is that what she's supposed to be? I think that the idea of the Olympic torch is really great. Once you look at her silhouette, you realize like, her legs and the bottom is like the torch and then there's the flames coming off of the top. Hence this little like piece that is uh, sticking out. I just wish that she would have told that story a little bit more. I think this whole top bottom should have been like that red, yellow and orange flames like brought it up from the top to here because then she got that beautiful like sculpted piece that would have really red. I think the fact that she made it beige at the top really kind of hurt her whole storyline. And if she was this flame goddess, I wish her hair would have also been in like this red orange flame color to really like bring it up and then give you like this two-tone thing. If she wanted to go another step further, she could have done some crazy makeup a la Magnetica, but maybe that's not her style and she would have still looked pretty with this beautiful face that she has on. And also this is a ball, so you do have to switch it up. So maybe that wasn't the best idea, but you know, I like a concept just like any other queen. So I'm like, playing with it a little bit. I think her concept is good and she looks cute. I don't think it's executed to the fullest degree, but it definitely has like a little bit of flame in there and she looks pretty okay. Not my favorite, not the worst, but good enough to get a soft bow. And for their opening ceremonies look, Misty Phoenix is coming out in this like, swimsuit inspired look. She definitely took a sports t-shirt, she cut it into a bodysuit and made this long dress out of this mesh using a whole bunch of other t-shirts. It's definitely giving you like swimmers vibes uh, and sport leisure, but also putting a little bit of fashion into it, which is really hard in these like sort of challenges because making a costume from scratch is difficult. <laughs> Trust me, I've tried. But you can see that this queen is really smart because she kept the t-shirt and then just turned it into a bodysuit and then just worked on the skirt, even though that skirt is not very easy to be made. On top of it, she did really smart pairing with the hair, which looks wet and slick back, so it kind of helps tell the story. All in all, for a one-day sewing challenge, I think this is a great look and is gonna be a bow. is Norma Bell and Norma Bell is coming out in this like little baby blue uh, number with this little like a sorcerer's hat. When she comes out, I'm immediately thinking 1950s, which, you know, they used to 
burn people who thought they were witches. So I thought this was like a really cute idea and she was gonna reveal to like this flaming dress. But she goes, no, no, no. She said she's actually channeling Harry Potter. She's channeling the French rivalry house of Hogwarts, Bo Baxton. If you remember in the Goblet of Fire, they competed against each other. So she is channeling them. And I was like, girl, work. I already liked my concept, but I liked this one even better because I'm a huge Harry Potter fan and anytime you can stick a little Harry Potter in there, I love it. I can't believe I didn't get it all the way. And I also think it's quite cute because she also took the French house and she's French and it's a female. It's just like all works from a conceptual point of view. And I think this is actually really smart because the Goblet of Fire is kind of like the Olympic games of the Harry Potter world. So she really like hit all the things, Harry Potter, uh, French house, Olympic games, a uh, Goblet of Fire. I'm like, check, 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 check. As she walks down the runway, she reveals uh, to this uh, little bodysuit, which is got some blue flames on it. Uh, I personally think I would have liked a little bit of a red flame just so it could feel a little bit more flamey, but I understand the use of blue because it matches the outside outfit. She also says that she's channeling a little bit of like the gymnast uniform and I totally see that. That was actually a little bit one of my first thoughts. I was like, oh, it's giving me a little bit figure skater, a little bit gymnast, but it is supposed to be Olympics. So I kind of like that. You know what I mean? Um, I think it's just like an intelligent play all around for Norma Bell. All in all, I think this is a really cute, a really smart and uh, well-made, and therefore gonna get a bow. And Noma Bell for her opening ceremonies look is coming out in this sort of light blue teal colored asymmetrical dress. She did a one glove with that and a lot of like these interesting orange sculptural pieces coming off of her. I am gonna say that I am gonna be rating the opening ceremonies looks a little bit easier just because it is a challenge and it is hard and they didn't bring them from at home. So I feel like we should be a little bit more respectful of that. I think this is a smart way to go. Noma Bell decided to just make this like simple dress. So even if you're not a seamstress, you know how to make like a pretty basic dress. And that's what she did. Something that looks good on her, something that fits her, and then sort of embellished it with these orange things to make it feel a little bit extra and a little bit special. And I think that, that this totally works. Is it gonna be the most avant-garde? Absolutely not. But honestly, in a challenge like this, it's not about being the most avant-garde, it's about surviving, at least in my opinion, because sewing is not my forte. So unless you're a seamstress, this is the best way to go. All in all, I think this was really intelligent, really smart, and gonna be a bow. Next up, we have Leona Winter, and Leona Winter is coming out in this uh, silver pants with this uh, flame uh, corseted top and this flame headpiece. She's finished it off with some uh, flowy fabric attached around her arms, and she said that she is actually giving you the literal Olympic flame. So she decided not to go in a crazy concept, but give you literal. So this conceptually is very similar to Misty Phoenix. Now I will say that this flame top is very gorgeous. You can see that there's a lot of work put into it and it definitely feels very cool. This is kind of what I was saying that Missy Phoenix should have done. Um, and I feel like it's far more successful here and it definitely reads as flames. I think that bringing it up to the headpiece is kind of cool, but it does camp it up a little bit. And I don't necessarily see Leona Winter as a camp queen. I think that she would have looked a lot better had she done just like really beautiful red and orange hair in this color scheme as opposed to a headpiece. Headpiece gives me a little bit of Perseo vibes. Speaking of Leona Winter being very elegant, I find these pants very disappointing. They just seem like really cheap silver leggings and I was expecting a little bit more from her. I think this would have been a lot better had it been a silver dress and just maybe like a mermaid style that just went to the bottom. I think that that would have just like brought it up another level. All in all, this is okay. It's just not at the level I'm expecting from Leona Winter. Winter. And yes, I am expecting higher from Leona Winter because look what she's been giving us the past a few episodes. All in all, I think it's passable. And since it's passable, it's going to get a soft. Bow. And for her opening ceremonies look, Leona Winter is coming out in these yellow pants with these yellow gloves and this bodice made out of these like sort of 
triangle plastic cones. She then paired it with this giant headpiece. Now, she said in the workroom that she does not sew, she hates sewing, and then she decided to make pants. Girl, pants is one of the hardest things to make because they just need to fit perfectly. It is very much like next level sewing techniques. My guess is that in preparation for Drag Race, she probably took a couple of sewing lessons because she knows this challenge is coming up and she probably learned to make a pair of pants and she stuck with it because everybody was telling her not to do it. And I think this was like smart because everybody knows pants are hard. So if you can sort of like ace pants, then you are definitely getting by. There, there is no ifs and about it. But is it good? In my opinion, meh. I love a good bright color, but this is a little bit much. It's feeling a little bit like Big Bird to me. And I think it's the mixture of the pants with the gloves. I love gloves. I think that they are super fun. Gloves are another thing that's tricky to make, so clearly she wanted to show off. But because her gloves go all the way up, her pants go all the way up, it's just like a lot of yellow. And I actually don't like how this bodice sort of thing hits her because it feels very flat and you can see that she's not wearing any sort of like breast plating, which makes her feel a little bit square in my opinion. On top of it, this headpiece is awful. I think it would have looked better without the headpiece because it's just making her feel like a little bit like a candy cane. All in all, even though this is very well made and a very and shows a lot of sewing skills, I don't think it is a great vibe. And because I don't think it's a great vibe, I'm going to go ahead and give it a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Edna Noir, and Edna Noir for her Olympic Flame outfit is coming out with this a slick back a blonde hair, this white chin strap, and this white leather dress with all the straps on it. And at the bottom, it's got flames. And at first, when she walks out, I'm like, what is this? I got a little bit of stray jacket, I got a little bit of edginess, and I like things that are a little bit weird and a little bit edgy. So when I saw the stray jacket, I was like, okay, cool, but like, I don't get the story. And then she goes on to explain that she is actually a baseball on fire. And I was like, huh? What? That was not at all what I got. First off, this does not look like a baseball. It honestly looks more like a volleyball than it does a baseball because a baseball doesn't have all of these straps on it. If it was a baseball, you should have done like two huge red lines with the stripes on it. And once you look closely, you do see that she did do the red stitching, but it is far too subtle for you to understand that. And it doesn't have the proper baseball shapes. It's like she's never seen a baseball before. Then she decides to go with this chin strap, which I hate because it just really cuts off her face. I don't think she needs it, but I guess she's trying to put in more baseball references. If she did want to do some baseball references to make us understand, and she wanted to keep this chin strap. I think she needed a helmet and maybe like a fully rhinestone helmet with a ponytail coming out of it to kind of give you a little bit more of that sports vibe. But uh, right now with this slick hair and this chin strap, it's just not reading at all. Then she said the bottom of her dress is a flame. And I was like, okay, I can read that because it's got all the little ripped pieces. But the problem is it's all one color. I think she, if she did this exact same thing, but did some pieces red, some pieces yellow, and some pieces orange, I think it would have read a little bit more flame-like. And just for all those dumb people out there, like myself, I think she probably should have worn a baseball glove to really tell the story. I think had she done all of those elements, this outfit could have worked. But in its current state as it is, it definitely doesn't work. It needs a lot of work. And that is why it's going to be a drab. <laughs> And for her opening ceremonies look, Edna Noir is coming out in this like purple oversized shirt with this silver oversized dress and she's paired it with flat gray hair. Ooh, girl, I don't like this look. I will commend her for trying to stick to the sports theme by putting this giant number at the front, but she literally made this out of fabric. Did she even use any unconventional materials to make this dress? It looks like that's a no. And if you are using fabric, why does it have to be so oversized? This makes it feel like she doesn't know how to sew and she just wanted to like 
cover her entire body, but because she's covering her entire body, it's just not really telling a cohesive story. I'm a big fan of purple and silver together. I like weird colors when they come together. So I thought this was a fun uh, color combination, but with a baggy top and a baggy dress, it just swallows her up. I think had she done this baggy skirt, she needed like a really tiny little dress, maybe even just like a little bralette. Or if she was going to do this like giant oversized shirt, then make it like a shirt dress and put some thigh high boots on it and call it a day. You know what I mean? It just was missing a vibe altogether. Then on top of it, she decided to go with really flat hair and I think that was an additional miss. One of the things about these sewing challenges is that you can really do a lot with styling and had she done like a big sculptural expensive wig with this, I think it would have made it look a little bit more intentional but with a flat wig and a giant like droopy dress, it's just not it. All in all, this is a mess through and through and definitely going to be a drab. <laughs> Next up, we have Lulu Straga, and Lulu Straga is coming out in this uh, red uh, burgundy color with these pieces coming off of it with these little uh, feathers on the end of it. Um, she then paired it with a red hair and silver boot. She goes on to explain that she is also the Olympic torch itself. Girl, there are so many people doing the Olympic torch and doing it so literally. It makes me question what is the prompt. So if you're asking what is a prompt in general, uh, on Drag Race, all the queens generally get sent the themes ahead of time. But the themes are usually a little bit vague where they say a theme inspired by fire and then the queens would take it in different directions. Um, so somebody would have done an Olympic flame and somebody else would have done maybe something else. Normally they would keep it a little bit vague so you would get a little bit of differentiation between the queens and also leave it a little bit open for interpretation. And they don't usually tell you the exact theme of the runway. But here it seems like they gave them the exact theme of the runway because a lot of them went very literal with it. That aside, let's get into this look. What I like about Lulu Straga's piece is these pieces coming off. It's very architectural and the little uh, feathers that are at the end of it really make it feel like it's moving and it definitely makes it feel in her vibe. I also like the pairing of the hair with this because the hair is also down and kind of reminds me of the pieces that were on this sculpted apart. I do wish that the bodysuit itself had a little bit more going on. I think like huge red and orange flames on it would have just really added onto it to make it feel like it's really coming off. It didn't have to be like this bright orange either. It could have been the same orange as the feathers, you know, just to give you that piece. The silver boots, I hate. I get why she chose them because she wanted to be like the little staff holding the flame. But I think, you know what? She should have just went with the full flame itself, went with some like red boots with some flames on them or some orange boots. And I think that that would have just really completed the look a little bit more for me. That being said, it is still a pretty good look and it is definitely feels like in Lulu Straga's uh, vision. And that is why she's gonna get a soft. <laughs> For her opening ceremonies look, Lulu Straga is coming out in this pink corseted number with just the little ribbons and just like those flowing fabric. She's then paired it with a big orange hair and I'm like, girl, work. First up, we find out that these were actually made with a yoga mat and she got this sculptural body and I'm like, oh my God. The fact that she did like this corset is already a feat in itself and then she did it with yoga mats and I was thinking to myself, that is really smart because the yoga mats have this sculpture in it so she can kind of like hide her body but then after that with the cutouts, it made it look really feminine and she just felt a very dainty. This felt like it was like 1950s pin up and then just to make things better she decided to go with a big hair which was really smart because when you are doing these sort of like little bit basic pieces you pair it with really good hair and it just elevates everything and that's exactly what she did here the whole vibe is giving like 1950s pinup girl and i'm loving it this looks super excellent and 100 percent gonna be a bop Next up, it's Le Philippe, and Le Philippe, for her Olympic flame look, is coming out as the sun goddess. That is right, she decided to go in a little bit of a different direction 
hallelujah, and give us a different vibe. She said the sun is the biggest ball of fire, so that is why she is channeling that. And let's face it, this whole like god goddess thing is a little bit Greek, and the Olympics are Greek, so I love that for her as well. She decided to come in a super pretty drag. She's got this blonde flowing hair, she's got this headpiece, she's got this beautiful gold dress. She definitely looks like a goddess, and she definitely looks like a million buck as she walks down the runway she ripped off the bottom of her skirt to make it this little booty moment i didn't think it was needed but i also didn't hate it so we'll leave it at that i honestly think that this is very very well done and a great shout for le philippe if i was to change one thing i would have done a little bit more to the headpiece i think that it's got these little sun rays to it i think she could have done a little bit more maybe added some stones or, or maybe done like double the amount at the bottom so that it felt like it was rain off a little bit and maybe in a gold color but that's just me being picky all in all she looks like a million bucks and definitely gonna be a oh. And for her opening ceremonies look, Le Philippe is coming out in this like orange sheer dress. She then paired it with a gold shoe, gold boxing gloves, and blonde hair. First, let's look at this dress. I think this dress is really smart. It's got little details in it and it fits her well. I think that it is nothing like extravagant, but it does work in this context. And in a sewing challenge, sometimes just making it work is enough. I think that when it came to the styling, Le Philippe really failed on this. I do not get the boxing gloves. I feel like they are very distracting from the dress. And honestly, it's not a dress that's that bad. So I don't know why you need to distract from them. Then she decided to do it with this hair. And I don't know what's up with this hair, but it looks a little ratty and not the best hair. And the thing is, is that it probably is pretty decent hair because it is sculpted and there is stuff going on. On, but I don't know what she put on top of it that makes it just feel like plopped on her head and a little bit heavy. I think had she done this with like really beautiful hair and actually lost the boxing gloves and just did like a little bracelet, it would have gone so much further. That being said, the dress is not bad. And since it's not bad and it's a sewing challenge, I think I'm going to give her a passable grade with a soft bow. Next up, we have Ruby on the Nail, and Ruby on the Nail is coming out in this like uh, beige petticoat with these orange and yellow bustles, and this flame lapel, and this coiffed hair. As she walks down the runway, her hair starts to smoke. As she originally comes out, I'm not sure what she is doing. I definitely see the references to the flame with like the lapel and the colors underneath her bustles, and of course her head flaming, but I didn't understand the concept. Concept. She goes on to explain that she's actually uh, incarnating the flame coming to Paris and she is like this traditional Parisian lady and channeling flames and I was like, okay, I'm starting to believe it a little bit more. I am getting a little bit of like Hunger Games vibes from it because it is so like campy and designery at the same time. It feels like somebody that was at the capital of the Hunger Games that is then doing this whole look to be inspired by these games that are happening. So let's get into this look. I think that the idea was quite interesting. I just don't know if it was like executed to a hundred percent. Personally, the sunglasses made no sense. I would have totally lost those. I feel like that was just an accessory for the sake of an accessory. The other thing I don't like is that she's wearing, since she's wearing these really tall heels, the dress doesn't touch the bottom. So clearly she got this dress made probably with other heels or uh, with no heels because this is like a weird length that only that much would be showing. I do love the hair. The hair is such a gag and it's so well well done but I just feel like the flame could have been integrated a little bit more into the whole outfit I think that the hair could have been in the colors of flame and it's now just in like this auburn orange I feel like a couple of streaks would have really helped that to make it feel a little bit like more volcanic and this petticoat on top is like a little bit beigey a little bit goldy again I probably would have made it like yellow just to really hide it in all in all it's not a bad look it's not my favorite look either but just because of this hair i'm definitely gonna go ahead and give it a bow. and for her opening ceremonies look 
Ruby on the Nail is coming out in this uh, blue number. As she starts to walk, she rips off the blue number to reveal that it is like this pink top with this blue dress and her purple underwear showing. She is trying to sell it to you on the runway by making it this sort of like camp funny moment, but girl, this is a mess. I'm not even gonna miss my words with this one. This one is a struggle bus. You can see that she is not a seamstress. There is like not one straight line on there. And I know she's gay, but you can give us a straight line when it comes to sewing. Like everything is just like pinned on her and it looks like she ran out of time. You know what else makes it look like she's run out of time is her makeup. Her makeup looks not as good and polished as it used to be, which makes me think she rushed through it. And she probably rushed through it because she was probably still working on the dress because she is not a seamstress. All in all, this needs just like a full restart. Drag Race often complains that some people just take a sort of like corset and glue stuff to it. This is the case where I was like, I wish she just took a corset and glued stuff to it because it would have been far better than whatever this is. Ultimately, I don't know how to fix this except for saying restart, so it is definitely gonna be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Perseo, and Perseo is coming out wearing this a little a gold number with these gold boots and this giant gold headpiece. They're then holding a gold torch with flames coming out of it. They go on to explain that it is actually a Greek god, which I'm going to assume is Ares, but correct me if I'm wrong, because the ancient Olymp Olympics themselves started in Greece. And I was like, ooh, I love this. This has got a whole storyline. It feels like some of the things that like other people were alluding to, but this, but El Perseo really went for it. I love this giant headpiece. It really makes it a moment and makes it really stand out. I love this play that they didn't go so literal with the Olympic torch. They did take it one or two degrees of separation, which is really needed in something like this. The only problem I have is that this is again the same thing that we've been seeing over and over with Perseo, which is a barely nothing suit with rig boots and a headpiece. I know that this is Gran Canaria drag, so I understand their aesthetic, but I do feel like we do need to evolve it a little bit more. I think a really great example of this is Drag Sethlas, who was on Drag Race España and Drag Race España All Stars, because they were able to keep their aesthetic and then just level it up every single time and then not lose themselves. I feel like Perseo is afraid to break free because they're afraid to lose themselves. That being said, I do love somebody who sticks, who knows their drag and sticks to it. I just think that it's hard on a show like this. I believe had they done this in a club, in a bar, on performances, everybody would gag and love all of these outfits because when you see them for the first time, they are like, wow. But once we see it week after week after week after week, we're kind of like, okay, we're good, like show us something else. That being said, I think this is one of the better ones that Perseo has done. And honestly, one of the ones that stands out amongst the other queens because they didn't go so literal. So I'm gonna go ahead and give them a bow. And for her opening ceremonies look, Perseo is coming out with this cone bra, this pink skirt, these uh, giant hula hoops on the back, and a giant uh, blonde wig. You can clearly see that she was trying to take the judges' critiques in mind, but by trying to go not so Grand Canaria, she definitely covered herself up a little bit more, and she wore hair for the first time. But is it working? I don't know. I think that the best part of this outfit is actually the bra with the cones. I feel like there's a lot going on, but it looks really cool. And I wish it would have continued that everywhere. Um, the dress part just looks like a piece of fabric that she pinned together and it doesn't look really great. You can clearly see she was going for length for the sake of going for length because she didn't want to show all of her, her body, but I just don't know how those two pieces connect together. Uh, so either she needed to bring some of that pink onto the bra or she needed to bring some of these detailing that, you know, this crisscross technique onto her legs or onto the skirt to really make it match a little bit. The pieces at the back on her back are quite cool. I would have probably kept that. And then she decided to go with hair. Now I've been saying she needs to switch it up, but is this the way to switch it up? I wish she would have went with much more sculptural hair, something that almost looked like her head pieces, but then made out of hair. So it would have like perfectly balanced the two. This big wig just does not seem like her at all. It feels like she probably borrowed it from somebody. I wouldn't be surprised if she borrowed it from somebody because it is just not her vibe altogether. And then just to make things just that much worse, she paired it with a 
white shoe. And I'm like, ugh, I think this would have been look, look better with like a gladiator sandal or just even just a pink basic shoe. And I think that had she done a lower shoe, it would have also gotten her out of her like Grand Canaria aesthetic. All in all, I think this is a little bit of a mess and definitely gonna be a drab. <laughs> And that is it for this week's episode. Oh wait, no it's not, because we find out while they're on the runway that they have another challenge. Now they have one hour to go back to the workroom and create a headpiece for the look that they are already wearing. And for anyone who's already made a headpiece, they need to make another one. When I heard this challenge, I really disliked it. I was really upset because I like a ball to have three looks and they were only giving us two and I was already disappointed, but then they throw in this challenge. So let's look at these pieces and let's fab or drab them, but I will not be giving them any star ratings. First up, it's Misty Phoenix and Misty Phoenix decided to go with this a big blue headpiece with this sort of a mesh coming over her face. I don't know about this headpiece. I think that the mesh on her face makes sense with her outfit because she's going for like this underwater look, but this giant headpiece, I'm like, this definitely does not fit the vibe of this gown. I think this would have looked a lot better with like a tiny fascinator that just covered her face. For the headpiece, I'm gonna go with a drab. Next up, it's Norma Belle, and Norma Belle decided to go with this orange architectural piece, and she just did it higher and swirly. This works with her look, this makes sense, but I think she also had the advantage that she had previously made a headpiece so that she already knew that her look would look good with a headpiece. I do think that this headpiece is not as good as her first headpiece, but it still works with her look and therefore it's still gonna be yay. Next, we have Leona Winter, and Leona Winter is coming out with this giant headpiece with all the triangles and these like a fringe detailing on it. Uh, clearly, she had some leftover fabric and materials to make this with, and it was a really smart. The headpiece is so over the top, so grandiose, and honestly, so much better than the one she previously had. When I see the outfit now, the outfit looks better for me. And I think that that just goes to show this power of styling. I wish she would have done something like this on her first look, because then I might have actually fabbed it, because this headpiece is amazing and definitely going to be a fab. Next up, we have Idina Noir, and Idina Noir is coming out with this giant headpiece that looked like giant googly eyes. She goes on to explain that she was trying to make this headpiece so big so it would distract from her horrible outfit. And you know what? That it does. But is it a good headpiece? Well, I think that the headpiece has nothing to do with the garment and she didn't really try, but she knew she was in the bottom, so why would you? All in all, not my favorite and definitely gonna be a drab. Next up, we have Perseo Perseo, which is coming out with this giant headpiece with all of these things stuck onto it. Honestly, the headpiece itself is crazy and outlandish, but considering that the look that she's working with, it kind of makes sense. It actually made me realize that actually all the stuff that she put onto that headpiece would have worked better on her dress had she done that previously to really make it tie in together. The only issue I have with this headpiece is that with this hair, it makes no sense because her hair is just like poofing up on the side. I wish she would have lost the wig and just put the headpiece on. That being said, is the headpiece any good? I think for this look and only an hour, I think it is. So I'm gonna give it a soft. Ah. Next, we have a Ruby on the Nail, and Ruby on the Nail decided to go with this hat, and she decided to play on the fact that her outfit is trash and literally tell you that she's got two left hands and can't sew and made this a little hat. Honestly, the hat is awful. I like that she's making fun of herself. At this point, her outfit is so bad that she knows she's probably gonna be in the bottom, so why try with this hat? And that's sort of my problem with this challenge is like, cute little idea, but really doesn't do anything, it doesn't really add anything, it's not gonna really change the standing. All in all, this hat is awful and gonna be a drab. Next, we have Le Philippe, and Le Philippe for her headpiece is coming out with this gold crown with these uh, giant things coming out of it. I think the idea of this headpiece really works, but I just don't feel like it's executed to the best degree. But then again, they only had an hour. I wish she had more time to work on this because I really feel like this could have worked. I think the idea is good. The sculpture is good. So I could kind of go either way with this headpiece because the idea is good and they only had an hour. I'm going to give her a soft 
Bow. Next we have Lulu Straga, and Lulu Straga is coming out with this like sort of a little headpiece that looks like a piece of jewelry. She decided to make this out of ping pong balls and then just put a little bit of rhinestones on it and a little bit of string. And oh my god, this is amazing. This feels like it belonged on the outfit the whole time. It didn't feel like something just plopped on top of it. And it really feels like dainty and put together. I cannot believe she made that in an hour. She is very smart, very talented, and definitely gonna get a Bob. And that is it for this week's episode. I don't know how I feel about this episode. Actually, I do know how I feel about this episode and I didn't quite like it. What I've determined watching this is the ball absolutely needs three looks. The first two looks are really good, and the third one, which they make in the workroom, is kind of bad. Now only seeing two, it just it's just not as cool. I like this idea of this headpiece, but I don't like it replacing another look. I think it would have been a cute little mini challenge, but not as a runway thing. I could see them trying, but this is one of those twists that should probably retire. But enough about that, let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. So my drab of the week this week for the flame look is going to Edna Noir. And for the opening ceremonies look, I am giving it to Ruby on the Nail. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week for the flame look goes to Love my bell. I just love a little Harry Potter, so I couldn't resist by giving her the fab. And I didn't actually give anybody five stars, so uh, I'm just gonna go with my personal choice. And for the opening ceremonies look, my fab of the week goes to... Loose like that. I guess this is a, a no surprise. This is literally the only five stars I gave all episode. It looked great. It even looked better than some people's uh, original looks in the flame looks. Okay, y'all, what do you think? Do you agree with my thoughts? Do you agree with my opinions? Do you agree with my fabs or drabs? Well, let me know in the comments below. And once you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye bye.